Okay, next, very briefly, I wanna just highlight a few elements of the subregions or regions of this realm. We have the, what's called the, the Maghreb and its neighbors. So the Maghreb is this little area in North Africa where you have the Atlas Mountains and kind of an island population out here. You also have the Egypt and the lower Nile River Basin, which includes Sudan. You have the Arabian Peninsula. You have uh, the Middle East, which, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid that name. And then these are called the Empire States. The Empire States includes Turkey and Iran, which have been great empires in the past. Um, Turkey, a remnant of the Ottoman Empire. Iran, the remnant of, a, of the previous Persian Empire. So let's start with Egypt and the Nile. And this is very centrally located in this realm. You have Egypt and you have Sudan. One thing I want to note about Sudan is that it used to be larger. Sudan used to include the modern country of South Sudan, but in fairly recently in 2011, there was a bloody civil war and South Sudan broke away. And so now South Sudan is included with the Sub-Saharan realm. In the Middle East, um, one thing, a couple things I'll highlight that maybe we haven't mentioned yet, Jordan, we mentioned that it didn't, does not have oil resources. So its economy is highly dependent on the United States foreign aid as a source of income, and it's a relatively stable country. You also have Lebanon here next door to Syria, and it's a good location, has a good climate, it, it has a fairly vibrant economy, but because it's next to Syria, it has a long, has long had problems of influence from its neighbors that try to influence in its politics. Uh, you have, for example, foreign fighters that come in and, and you know, there, there's a, quite a bit of struggle that there's been civil wars and things that have happened in Lebanon, a lot of it because of neighbors. And I'm going to show some clips that talk a little bit more about these inter-country struggles in the Middle East. On the Arabian Peninsula, you have the really major country of Saudi Arabia. Even though its population is relatively low, it is such a wealthy country that it holds a lot of power in the world. It has the uh, largest oil reserves in the realm. As this, they talk about, the book will talk about this belt of economic activity across the peninsula. You also have the Gulf states, these sort of smaller countries in the Persian Gulf that are gaining in wealth and they're also becoming more integrated with the global economy. They're becoming uh, more integrated with, you know, the, with a lot of the, they're, they're gaining economic ties with other parts of the world. Now we have the Gulf, we have two extremes. We have the Gulf states up here where they're wealthy and more connected. Then we also have Yemen down here, which is um, in extreme poverty and is struggling with an ongoing civil war. I'll try to include a clip that talks more about Yemen and the civil war happening. In the empire states, you have Turkey. One thing to note about Turkey is it, at least in the past is adhered to what's called the Turkish model which means that it, its government is not based on religion, but is what's called a secular state. It is a sort of a non-religion government with a multi-party democracy. So there is some sort of um, um, disconnection between the religion and how the government is run. That's starting to change slightly over time now. Um, also, Turkey includes Istanbul, which is the largest city in the realm. Istanbul is right at the connection between Asia and Europe. And Turkey sits right in between this realm and Europe. And so it's, it has become increasingly integrated with Europe. Um, it's a member of NATO. There has been talk in the past of it joining the European Union, but those are not going well now. Turkey has not been, um, um, as far as you know, the, the way that the government is run, uh, journalists, you know, freedom of press, and a few other policies have made it not where it's not living up to what it would need to join the European Union. Now you have Iran here. This is a remnant of what was the Persian Empire. Uh, one thing I wanna re-note about it is that it's a majority Shiite country. And as such, it supports many other Shiite countries in the region or in the realm. And watch the video clip on the new Cold War in the Middle East. It's really about the struggle between Iran and Saudi Arabia for dominance in this part of the world. 
Also, it is a very modern and urbanized country that has about 71% of people live in urban areas. And it is actually a very, it's, it's actually a very modern country. Lastly is the Maghreb and its neighbors, I guess it would be called, but the Maghreb is sort of the, includes the Northwestern Africa. The Maghreb is really sort of this island here at the edge of the Atlas Mountains. And it's like an island that sits in North Africa and it's divided among the, from other places by the Sahara Desert. And then lastly, there's something that's sort of a region, it's called the Africa Transition Zone. And here we have countries like Ethiopia and Somalia that are included in that. But we're gonna talk about them a bit more next week with Sub-Saharan Africa, because many of these places in the transition zone really are straddle both, both realms. They straddle the North African realm, but also straddle the Sub-Saharan realm. So we're gonna cover a bit more about that later, but this is kind of the edge between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa.